Okay, so <laughs> Adrian, you call your podcast Nursing Uncensored. So there's a list of things that I have that <laughs> I, I think that, that nurses need to, we need to talk about some shit. Some real, yeah. <laughs> so Adrian, we need to talk about some shit, okay? I mean, get, get some shit off my shoulders. Here. Uh-huh. I mean, you, your podcast is called Nursing Uncensored, and I went through a few of your podcasts, and you do touch upon some touchy subjects. Mm-hmm. I, I want to start there, and then I'm going to end on the touchy subjects that you haven't touched upon yet. Sure. Because it's super important, okay? Yeah. I just did a story for my Nursing News um, uh, a weekly podcast show, YouTube channel, um, about how nurses are at a higher risk for um, suicide than many other professions. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this, when I found out these facts, I was like, holy shit, this is crazy, right? And I, and I was like, I, in my personal experience, I've heard of one nurse in my facility hospital that has committed suicide. It was a really sad thing. You know, we, we did everything we could for the family, um, but it was like every other suicide. It was out of the blue. Like no one knew, right? That's the thing. Um, but I was so I was so confused. Uh, we I did the research and I looked up all, all the data, and it was just like it's a lot of nurses who work night shift that are higher risk. A lot of nurses um, who are doing the twelve hour shifts. People think it's easier because you have four days off, but it's a lot of stress all in one day, squeezed in one day. It's a lot of nurses because all they doing, especially when they're doing the overnights or they're doing the twelve hour shifts, are drinking three, four, five cups of coffee a day. Like it, it just. The schedule, Different. the job, the emotional stress, the pressure, all of it gets put onto these nurses. Can you please talk to me about um, how, how do you deal with the stress? How do you deal with the burnout, like, you know, the fight against That's burnout? That's a good question. Yeah. And, and um, have you dealt with any nursing suicide issues of friends, colleagues, coworkers, any of that? So to answer the that last question, first off, I have not known anyone personally um, that has ever, that I know of, attempted or considered or committed. Here's the thing. That's the other thing is committed suicide. I've talked about this with my partner. This is like kind of a passive way of talking about it. And I think it also pathologizes it in a way that's maybe. What do you mean by pathologizing? Um, so I guess here, let's say they committed an act. It sounds criminal and punitive. I personally while some people may think it's insensitive, I say that person killed themselves. It was an action that they did. It doesn't mean they're a criminal. It doesn't mean that they, it means that they were in pain and something was unable to relieve their pain. And as I got to say, that does sound a little more heavy and it makes you think about it a little bit more. Um, It makes you think about it more. It also makes you think about, um, like I said, like committed suicide, committed. I don't know. That just sounds to me like, um, something that would be on a police report and yeah. not, you know, so anyway, that's, that's like a whole separate topic. I don't want to go down that road, but I guess I have known nurses that have shown signs of burnout, including myself. My first two years, while I did not approach the realm of feeling suicidal, the tumultuousness of the stress and the continuous witnessing of suffering, um, the lack of self-care that some people miss out on, like drinking the coffee, but not the water, you know, like not sleeping well, not balancing work life, not having those coping mechanisms, whatever they are. Um, And so it's taken me years to develop those because I also do on our unit, we do a lot of end of life care and palliative care or symptom management. So we're seeing people that are at the end stages of their diseases and are dying frequently on our unit. And some people bowed out. They were like, when we opened our palliative care service, they were like, I didn't sign up for this. I can't do this. I have kind of taken to it because even though, and here's the thing, I've, it's taken me a long time. It's not just like, oh yeah, I'm good with it now. Like I still struggle. But just to mention a few of the things that have kind of made a difference for me is one is, you know who Z Dog MD is, right? Of course, yeah. Yeah. So he does, he has a series of videos about empathy versus compassion and how empathy can be a paralyzing and dangerous force when you are constantly exposed to people that are in suffering or in distress or in the worst time of their lives. As wait, people wait, seriously? Out of the hospital. Yeah. That's his take on it? Well, um, so here's the thing. And I feel like I'm, that's the opposite. Wait, what? No, 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 right, seriously? but it seems counterintuitive, but here's the thing. And 
and and I'm not going to try to distill down his message. I want people to go and listen to it. But here's the thing. So he, I think, and I hope I'm not messing up the metaphor, or not the metaphor, the example, but he talks about how, okay, say you have a patient that is detoxing from drugs yeah. and you feel empathy for them. So empathy is putting yourself in their shoes, feeling what they're feeling, wishing you could relieve that suffering. That's kind of a crude, I mean, I'm sure it could be defined better. But essentially you feel what they're feeling. You want to make them feel better. So an easy way maybe short term to help someone who's detoxing from drugs is to give them the drugs they're detoxing from. If somebody's coming down from something that they've been addicted to, the, the empathy makes you say, I want their pain to stop. I'm going to give them the drugs. Your compassion, the, the side of you that is compassionate in the face of suffering says, I care about you and I want you to be better long term. So I'm not going to give you the drugs. You're going to throw up. You're going to feel like shit. You're going to need meds to get through this. That's hard. It's hard to witness. <clears throat> it's hard to enforce when people are saying, please just help me. This hurts so bad. So I'm, this is a crude way that I'm distilling it down. I'm, I'm probably not doing it as eloquently or as in depth. I encourage people to find it on YouTube and listen to it. But if we act with empathy, we're going to burn ourselves out because we're feeling what they're feeling fully. We're putting ourselves in their shoes. With compassion, we're understanding what their situation is and we're feeling human love for them, whatever that looks like to you. But you're not going to give in just to relieve their immediate suffering. Does that, does that make sense? That's a perfect analogy or example just because when you are dealing with, especially in nursing or in healthcare, when you are dealing with people who are using or who are um, dealing with addiction of any kind, Mm -hmm. their family, their best friend, their, the loved ones who are 1000% the enablers mm -hmm. care the most, mm -hmm. which you yeah. have to, you, you have to, I mean, it's just the truth of the situation. Mm -hmm. The person that loves them the most is the person that's running to the store, getting them an, another six pack is mm -hmm. the person that's buying the drugs, borrowing them a thousand hundred dollars. Often. Yes. Yes. And it's, it's, the worst thing, because you're like, you love them, you care about them, but you need to stop helping them because right. they don't want them to feel that that's such a, that's such a good example. Adrian, you're good and, at this. And you have to consider, but it took, it's taken me years and tons of like listening to other people, listening to podcasts, talking to other nurses, having <clears throat> them support me in my dark hours. Um, and I, I try to remember that. I try to remember to have compassion and not empathy because empathy will singe your roots immediately. Like you can't do that for very long, especially when you're in a situation where people are suffering, people are dying. On night shift, we don't have as much support staff. We're much more autonomous. Preach, preach. Like, am I going to call the doctor at 3 a.m. for this or can I handle it myself without, right. without order? You know, like, can I do this without needing to cross over, um, like my, my, pra my scope of practice? Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is that I try to remember, like, for example, say I have a patient who has family and that patient is dying or they're sick or whatever, and the family's in distress. I need to remember that I, I may have my own grief because sometimes I take care of patients that I've known a really long time. I see them from the early stages of their illness all the way through the end. Um, so I have to remember this is their experience. I yes. may have emotions about it, but I'm a facilitator of this experience for them, whatever that means, whether that means pain management, comfort, you know, be, being the person that like sits and talks to them in the middle of the night because they're scared. That takes a lot of different faces. Um, but the bottom line is that I can take care of my shit when I get home and I debrief with my friends or my coworkers or I go to yoga or I get on a bike and I ride my heart out till I'm exhausted and I can sleep. Like whatever your coping mechanisms look like, you have to find yeah. those along the way. But the way you find those is by talking to other people. Hey, what do you do when you feel like this? How do you deal with it when you, you know, you can't get something out of your mind that's been bothering you that happened at work? It's never easy and it's never a perfect fix. Like you're never going to handle every situation perfectly, but um, it's taken me a few years. But now I can say that if I have a difficult case, I may be tore up inside, but I know that I need to be clear and focused for them. And then if I need to lose it in the bathroom later, I can do that. But right now this is their experience and I can't like, I don't want to be crying so hard that the family member's comforting me because then, right. I've, then I've stepped out of my role and I'm not doing what I need to be doing for them. So, um, yeah, that's, 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 how I, that's kind of how I think about it. But you also have to have those things that, like, you have, if you don't have something in your life that you love that makes you feel good, you need to find it. Whether that's, like I said, all the things I listed, running, cooking, talking with friends, 
painting, whatever the hell it is you do, therapy, find it, find something that works. And when you find something that works, stick with it. If it stops working, find something else. Right. I love that. I love that. I love that. Cause we all need that something, right? Mm -hmm. We all need that something. 